Hi, I'm Tom Zimmerman from the EMGR podcast. This episode is about some strategies we can use to select a particular memory to target. Um, how we do that, how we do that quickly, efficiently, um, and in ways that may ultimately be productive. Most of the things that I'm saying have to do directly with the four blinks approach. So I'm assuming that you're um, familiar with that approach. And at the very beginning of that approach are the core hardware pieces of the four blinks approach, which are um, step one, develop a container, and step two, develop a calm scene. So before we even talk about targeting a memory with any individual client, we wanna make sure that they have those two core pieces in place because you know, this dance of lightly activate container, calm scene blinks, lightly activate container, calm scene blinks. We wanna have this seesaw working and tested and practiced very well before we start um, selecting an individual memory out of the whole, you know, data bank of memories. Also, suppose we've done that, you know, we've, we've done that before. Um, on any given session where we may do reprocessing, we wanna make sure that the client can access both the container and the calm engaging scene um, easily. We wanna make sure they're accessible, that they're right here. So, um, so even though we do, we do step one and we do step two, typically one time, we want to make sure that the client can get in touch with those very quickly before we start talking about individual memories. Then step three is very rapid. That's when we select the memory. And typically that should take about 10 seconds or less. So the important part about step three is that the very act of isolating a memory and identifying a memory, the very act of that is paired with containing. So even as we're pointing to the memory, we're grabbing it, putting it in the container and pushing it out of, the, out of awareness. So what allows us to do this approach um, in a really remarkable and rapid way also introduces some potential for peril. So on one hand, we want to identify a memory, but we don't want to talk about it. We don't want to go out of our way to have the client tell us that much about it. But we also need to verify that what they're targeting is a memory because what we move in, what we move and resolve in transformational trauma therapies are individual memories, not whole themes, not the whole of your seventh grade year, very, very specific memory. So you want to give the client that information. What we're moving is a single individual memory. And um, even though we're not going to talk about it, I may check with you to make sure that what you're actually targeting is a memory, a particular individual slice of time that we're going to spend a little bit of time um, checking in on, microseconds checking in on, and containering. So, there are many ways that you might be able to get at a memory. The goal is to kind of get at a memory, not to let it hit the body. Identify a memory, put it in the container, and then when we check on the memory, have that distress come and then immediately contain it, ideally before it can, before it can hit the body. So one of the ways we might do this is we may identify some themes right? Either themes in, in our assessment with the client, themes of what have, what's been coming up in the last few sessions, whatever it is that most tend to be contributing to current distress. And then we can simply ask the client, is it okay next session to work on something connected with that theme? Um, using the flash approach that, that we've talked about and, you know, develop the develop the, the step one and the step two with. So if that's the case, when the next session starts, we just ask client consent, the, the, either the client or the client's parts to consent to work on a memory. And then we very quickly identify a memory. It's relevant to that theme, contain it, push it out of awareness. And um, 
you can definitely take a theme approach. I can take a theme approach. You can take a negative cognitions approach. If appropriate, you can also target, you know, the elephants in the room. You can target whatever the presenting issue or presenting trauma the client brings to you. We can line this up, you know, conceptually, um, a prior session. So, um, Although what I don't like to do is I don't like to tell clients with, with really complex trauma, why don't we work on this particular memory next session? Because if we do that, they're likely to come to session already activated. Um, also related to target selection, it is probably a good idea with um, you being relatively new at this therapy, with the client being relatively new, at the core tasks of keeping this seesaw of lightly activate container, calm scene blinks, lightly activate container, calm scene blinks. It's probably a good idea to work on smaller targets first to test the gear, um, test the, you know, test the client's ability to number one, lightly activate, test the client's capacity to container and see that containment, um, that contained item be pushed out of awareness. So, Another thing we may do related to finding targets, if the client is in the preparation phase for EMDR, one of the best strategies we can do to target memories um, or memories inside of themes that are mostly, that are most resonating lately. Um, one of the reasons I do that is why I want to select memories that have been most resonating lately is this will help because we're targeting what has been most contributing to current instability. And long story short, the client will get healthier faster and will be able to phase two, resource the client faster because they're getting their feet under them a little bit more easily. So you can always um, target whatever the flashbacks, whatever the the insecurities, whatever the points are that have been coming up that are most contributing to current instability. That's another strategy. Um, also, the clients I'm most likely to be doing flash with are the same clients I'm probably not doing a detailed and chronological targeting plan with because our energies are focused on trying to find somewhere that we might work that might be both helpful and tolerable to the client's parts. So if you're working with a client with identified parts, a lot of your assessment of where we're going to target needs to involve input from all parts of the self and all parts of the client's system. Um, I'm going to have a whole podcast where I simply talk about how we work with and navigate client's parts um, in a flash context. In every part, is allowed and encouraged to make suggestions, target suge suggestions, and we should leave the door open to let any part veto a memory that we might be considering as having a target today. So um, this will go a lot better if parts work is already part of your um, client, uh, client preparation repertoire. But it is important um, in target selection to get consent from the whole system and get buy-in and invite the whole system to contribute to this, uh, to this process. Now, some people may want to target memories that have particular suds or, or subjective units of distress or disturbance. Um, I don't ask about suds in the beginning. If we think about what the suds is, is it a, it's an assessment of the amount of distress that remains in that memory. And I don't want to get the suds because think about even what we do in EMDR. When we get the suds, we are sending a client back to the target. And, and again, we're assessing for an appraisal. We're almost asking the client to hold this stuff, see how hot it is and report back on it. We do not want to do that in flash-like approaches. So just keep in mind, you probably don't want to do an assessment based on suds because, because it involves um, letting that, letting uh, too much trauma come too close to us. 
So I'm hoping you're getting the sense that there are lots and lots and lots of ways to select a memory to work on. Again, a quick review. Um, we can identify themes from, that have shown up either in, as part of the client's intake or in recent sessions, get consent to work on a memory related to that theme. We can target the memories if the client is coming to see you for a particular reason, divorce, um, you know, conflict with, with someone in the family, um, heartache, any of those things. If that's a presenting issue, let um, you can always just say, you know, do you want to do you want to work in that territory? Um, again, as a reminder, it's a good idea to target smaller things first to test the gear. Um, and if the client, again, if the client's in preparation phase for EMDR, um, it makes sense to target whatever is most elbowing you out of your window of tolerance lately. Doing that is very likely to be productive. Um, so, again, don't forget clients' parts. Clients' parts can help you select an ideal memory to process on any individual on any individual session. So I'm hoping these ideas related to target selection are helpful. Really with clients with complex trauma, they need to heal. So find something to work on that their system um, intuits might be both tolerable and helpful. Um, again, thanks for joining. Check out forblinks.com if you have any questions and let me know how I can how I can be helpful. Thanks a lot.